Okay, today we're playing a game on Iconvolve. The average SR of this game was 1,898, and we will be playing Roadhog and Arissa on defense, and Moira on attack. And our current team composition is Reinhardt, Roadhog, Junkrat, Bastion, Mercy, and Moira. So, we have nothing that can kill Farah on our team, which is of great concern to me always, but particularly on maps like Iconvolve, where the attacking team is very likely to have a Farah on it. So that's concerning to me. The other day I did have someone argue with me that Bastion countered Farah because he's one of the three hitscan DPS in the game. And I went, well, who are the other two hitscan DPS? And they went, Soldier and McCree. And I went, I see. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that train of thought. I feel like Bastion probably doesn't actually counter Farah. But, you know, he has a hitscan weapon, so I guess technically. By the same token, Reaper also probably counters Farah, because his guns are also hitscan, technically. As is uh, Sombra's. At least Sombra soon will be able to make Farah stop flying, so that'll be fun. Anyway, enough of this absolute nonsense. Let's start the game. No sound today, by the way, because there's a lot of talking in the background. Some of which I found to be greatly aggravating, so we will not be listening to any of that today. No, sir. So we're playing Road High, we've got Reinhardt here with us, we're, our plan is to sit here and hook people. There's somebody on the checkpoint behind us, we've come back, and it's D.Va, to no one's great surprise. She wasn't looking at us, so you can get a shot in on the D.Va from behind, then hook her, then shoot her again, and do more damage, and maybe get her out of mech before she can float off like that, she was reasonably low when she disappeared away. It's alright, they're winning the fight over there, so we can just kind of like keep trying to beat up on uh, D.Va. Diva's lost her mech now. We don't have our hook to actually kill Baby Diva, which is makes Roadhog is really bad at killing Baby Diva if he doesn't have his hook up because the spread on Roadhog's weapon is very inconvenient. We're currently sleepy. You know, Roadhog's a big guy. He's got to take a break every now and then. You know how it is. Even though take a breather is still called take a breather, even though he is in no way stopping and taking a breather, he is still very much moving around anyway. We got into a scuffle with this boy. We could have killed him. Like, we should have just shot into him there instead of using, uh, take a breather, because he ain't gonna do 420 damage to us in one shot. We're gonna be, we're gonna be fine. We could have killed him right there instead of letting him scuffle, uh, scuffle, scurry away. I'm gonna go back, because I just want everyone to observe the, where Diva's mech currently is. She has found some interesting strategies over here. And, boop, back out again. All right. So, we're just gonna fight with her for a bit, she's out of mech, we decide that we're gonna use Whole Hog. I mean, it's not a great time to use it, because they're not really doing very much right now. Their Mercy is using Valkyrie, so I mean, there's that, but like, really we're using this on Baby Diva and the Roadhog who went in the doorway and will probably not come out in front of us. So it just ends up not really doing very much of anything. And we had our hook off cooldown, correct? Yeah, we had our hook off cooldown, so we could have just hooked Baby Diva and killed her. And then this whole situation is much less complicated, because you just hook Baby Diva, she's dead, and then like, what? You know, just alt Roadhog? That doesn't seem worth it. So here's, uh, here's Soldier. Just, uh, you know, here's a thing. Uh, try to right-click this boy first, because if you right-click him, he dies. Because if you see, he drops down very low, and he dies anyway. But you kill him more efficiently, is what I should say. Because, oh look, he survived with very little HP. And the idea is sort of you right-click him, cancel the animation, hook him, shoot him again, melee him. They're dead, you know. We kill him anyway, because he just kind of didn't know what to do, and he was very low. But we could have killed him more efficiently. And sometimes they scurry away. The dirty little scurrying rats that DPS players are. So Roadhog, he's up to no good over here. Now he's dead, so he won't be getting up to no more no good in the near future. Diva, like, their, their Diva's not very good. Their Diva has basically been doing nothing but providing our team ult charge this entire time. Uh, again, like, this gets uh, messy in general. Like, left-click this boy before you hook him. We try to right-click him. He's too close. Way too close for that one to work out. Left-click, hook. Left-click, melee. He dies. We, like, mess it up after that because we're kind of getting bumped around and stuff. But efficiency is very important. And also, Roadhog struggles to one-shot people these days. So any little extra advantage you can get is good. 
So a Roadhog hooked us first. Ah, I remember the olden days when the Roadhog that hooked first just died, but these, this is not how it is anymore. So as we can see in the kill feed, we're losing a lot of people very quickly. All our supports are dead. Moira died, got rezzed, and died again. And then they used about five ultimates and killed us. So that's fair enough, frankly. We, brought, we shouldn't have even used Whole Hog by that point because we'd already lost the fight and most likely lost the objective. Whole Hog is not one of those ultimates that's going to swing a fight round back on its head when you've already started losing, you know? It can, but like... It's pretty unlikely. You're better off just saving it during there. So, one of the things, uh, Reinhardt is, uh, not very good, as we might have noticed right there. One of the things that, uh, did annoy me during the, uh, conversations that were happening in the background was someone pointed out that they should have expected to lose this checkpoint because it's basically impossible to defend the street phase on any map. And I'm like, that's true of Numbani and King's Row. This is not really true on Eichenwald, where I feel like I probably see more games end on the street on this phase than on the third phase, you know? And then there's the first phase as well, which is always very fun for everybody. The, uh, <clears throat> the street phase on Eichenwald is rather easy to defend, though, because once they get to the bridge... They don't have very many options anymore, as long as you don't let them just, like, flank you and kill you. But that is true of literally every map, so... Well... No, it is true of literally every map. I was like, technically, but no, no, it is definitely true of every map. So, we... We're hanging out up here. This boy's trying to just, like, walk up and bully Reinhardt. What Reinhardt should do here is start smacking that boy. Just smack him once, then as soon as, like... This is a thing with Reinhardt. As soon as you see the hammer make contact, you then just hold the shield up again. And then if somebody's trying to pull this maneuver on you, where they walk up and start trying to bully you, you're just like, bat, 75, start blocking, 75. And then they usually die or leave at that point. Whereas just sort of watching them do that tends to lead to you dying. Now, granted, he's being bad for other reasons as well. Because as we can see here, What's he blocking for, right? This wall behind him? This wall's never felt safer in its entire fucking life, let me tell you. Reinhardt's on the case. This mossy broken wall ain't gonna get a scratch on it. So he's blocking for exactly nothing right now. He's just sort of standing up here, which is not a good place to stand anyway, really, because... If you get fucked here, you got a long way to go to get back to safety. And you, they can fight you from over this area where your team can't see them, right? Because there's this corner in the way. So if you're holding them here, your team has to stand in really awkward positions to actually see the enemy team. What we like to do here is we like to defend sort of here-ish. Because then the payload has come around the corner. So the, your team can actually shoot people because they're in the fucking street, right? Because they're around this corner, it's very hard to fight them. Whereas if they're actually, like, on the street, yeah, they got the payload for cover. They don't have a fucking castle wall for cover, though. And then also, if you need to retreat, there's there's places you can go, and it's not as far to go if you have to get out of the way. Also, if they have a Reinhardt, pin dead. Easy money. So, the moral of the story is, don't do this. Now, I know we're playing Roadhog, but I played Reinhardt for four fucking seasons. Don't do this. And he was basically all I played for those four seasons. Those were... Oh, those were a simpler time. So, now, Reinhardt's fucking dead to not, no one's surprise. Except probably Reinhardt. He probably didn't expect to die. I expected him to die. So now we have to try and do this without our actual main tank to block for us. You know, I guess... The street phase would seem pretty impossible to defend if you thought that was the correct maneuver for defending the street phase, to be fair. I mean, I guess he's got me there. Anyway, so he's back now. Uh, who else? Someone died. Who died on our team? I think it was Junkrat? Yeah, our Junkrat died. That sucks. So we tried to kill the Orissa right here. She's got a lot of things to make sure she doesn't die right now, so that's unfortunate. We couldn't kill her. Their, uh, their soldier is using Tac Visor. Junkrat just killed half our team. So we we get to lose this checkpoint because they are also at the bridge. So by the time we actually get back here, they're going to be at the checkpoint. And, you know, 
he's like, this the street phase seems impossible to defend, and I'm like, yeah, Junkrat killed three people with his ultimate, and you just suicided right at the start of it. So yeah, you know, I guess it doesn't look very good, but there were there were measures that could have been made here to prevent that from happening. But no, so he's playing McCree now. Thank God. Thank the Lord. So we're going to change to Orisa. We actually go back to do it. No, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, no, yeah, no, we're thinking about it. Um, it's going to be really hard to defend with just a Roadhog as your tank. You should not have made this switch before somebody else could switch to compensate. Because now our team is fucking awful. So now Junkrat's changed to Diva. I would rather have Junkrat than McCree on this checkpoint because, like, here's, like, you know, it's a very confined location over here, you know. There's a lot of, like, little areas that a lot of people are going to be squeezed into, which is um, sort of where AoE damage is very good. And, you know, people like Farah, mm, there's not a lot of places to go in this map, so, like, you don't usually need a hit scan DPS in here. Because... But anyway, this is the man that thought it was okay to stand up there when he was defending this checkpoint as Reinhardt. So, we're using Whole Hog right now. He's also using Whole Hog, and we get into an unfortunate situation. We were in a worse position to be Whole Hogged because we were right next to a corner. So, we get fucked right there, basically, is how that one goes. You really just hope you don't get into a whole hog fight with the other road hog because it's it's just really awkward and messy as you would expect a fight between two pigs to be. You know, it is quite unpleasant for all parties involved. So we're playing Arissa now, and we will be for the rest of the defense phase, which as you can see is not too terribly long, but so there's a there is still a Farah above us right now, and we're kinda getting fucked up. You gotta get out of the way. You're gonna die. Arissa is really easy to... She's a very soft tank if she has no cooldowns. You've got no cooldowns right now. If you've got Fortify, all right, you can kind of... You can stand out here and probably survive. You don't have Fortify, there's no shield there. You've got to go around the corner because you standing there like that is just going to get you killed. Then the tire drops on our head and we die again, so it feels bad, man. If you got no cooldowns, you got to, like, get out of the way as Arissa because you're going to get murdered if you're out in the open and you don't have Fortify. Uh, and you've got, like, nobody else around with you to help tank, which we did not at that moment in time. Very poor use of company resources over here, using uh, High Noon on a fight that we had already won. Coalescence already al also being used on this fight that we've already won. So, fantastic, great, wonderful. And, you know, we see we've got a minute and a half left, so they've got one, maybe two fights left, depending on how quickly they uh, do stuff right here. So we're sitting, like, really far back right now. We can go stand up there now. We don't have to stand all the way back here, because this is, like, where we like to defend on this map anyway. Usually, we usually stand up here and then fall back if we have to. Standing back here is, like, you give them, like, you give them a lot of space, they can suddenly try and use this doorway, like... They can uh, actually get into the doorways over there and use cover, whereas if you're standing up here, they have the options of go through the front or go through the fuck gates. So it's usually easier to play up around this corner rather than back here. Um, so, and like the payloads behind us, they're not gonna fucking sneak around us and fucking back cap it or anything. There's nowhere, there's no possible way they can do that unless they have a Sombra who is channeling fucking Solid Snake. There, it's no way. So we, we don't need to be this far back. We can go we can go play further up. And now Reinhardt's going in. He shouldn't be doing this. Like, re, like this is not okay for him to have been doing that. And he's dead now. He he should not have done that. He he dreamed a bit. He used attack visor on a fight that we'd already lost. And he, should, he might have used it a little bit earlier than that. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, there was a, a thing here where I was like, oh, we want to try and stagger this guy if possible. That'd be great. We're really bad at, like, holding the dude in place, though, honestly. Like, McCree can do it, but McCree was nowhere to be seen at the time. He and uh, Soldier just kind of shuffled out of the way. Here comes Reinhardt. I would prefer if you walked forward and fortified to block this guy's charge, just because 
I'm I'm an old fashioned Reinhardt player. I don't like letting the other Reinhardt charge through because even if I can get out of the way, I worry about him charging past me and pinning the mercy because I've seen that happen a great many times. And if he charge bonks into you when you use fortify, you just like you need to drill a hole right through the center of his fucking skull. So uh, they are using Roadhog. The Roadhog's using his ultimate right now. Soldier's using his ultimate. We don't have a very good method of blocking Tac Visor except for Diva, but I believe the Diva is also is uh, Silver. So she probably had like no defense matrix at that point. You know, so they end up getting it there in overtime, which is uh, not too surprising, seeing as they came in with several ultimates and we had no ultimates because we had just used a bunch of a bunch of them. Quite poorly, uh, previously. So, that didn't go super well. Uh, we... And, uh, this was the other thing that right, really tweaked me about the conversations that were happening in the background. It's like, I don't class a push that got it to the end of the track in overtime to be a very good push. 90% of the games that take place on this map do not get to the end of the check to get do not get to the end of the track. And that's not just true of Eichenwald, that's true of most payload and hybrid maps. It doesn't you you very rarely play multiple rounds on these maps. So the fact they got it to the end and Eichenwald has some very hard checkpoints to get through. It's one of those maps where you can feasibly win the game defending on any of the three checkpoints. It's they the fact they got it to the end of the track I find to be very depressing and is not something that I find very encouraging when I have to then attack Eichenwald after that. Cause oh I've played a lot of games where we never get past the archway. And so that was the other thing that, like, really upset me. In general, the, like, we're in a full six-man right here. Like, in general, I found a lot of the conversation happening in the background to be basically getting up our own ass about shit that doesn't really matter a lot of the time. So, two of them are dead right now. One of them's alive again, which is very inconvenient. We don't need to be as close as we are right now, because we're touching this boy... And, you know, the healing doesn't do more if we're touching them, right? Even though, like, it seems like that should be how it works. That's not how it works. We stand a lot further back than that right there. We are playing really aggressively right now at half health. Like, if you're going to go that far up, here, here's also the thing. Um, our mercy is going to be glued to far for basically the rest of time. You're probably going to have to use your healing orb quite frequently to heal yourself. If you're going to play this far up, you got to use your healing orb on yourself way sooner because you're walking around at half health that far up. That's so easy to die. Yeah, you don't want to have to use the healing orb to heal yourself, but like that's better than the alternative of probably dying, right? Think about it this way. All right, I use this 10 second cooldown to heal myself. I don't really want to do that, but if I die, that's very bad. And the 10 second cooldown, all right, Less, less than ideal use for it, but I didn't die, so that's good. Or I negated the risk of dying, you know. And it's it's not quite as dire as, like, an Anna that has to use her grenade just to heal herself, right? Because, like, Anna's grenade is the best thing about Anna, right? You want to hit multiple people with that. Moira's orb is usually just used to be generating more ult charge and, like, doing poke damage to people. So if you have to use it to heal yourself, it's not the end of the world, you know, because the only other thing it was going to be doing is, like, getting you some ult charge and some chip damage. So it's not the end of the world if you have to use one to heal yourself. Ideally, you just go and get a health kit. But if you don't, if you ain't got time or you're not in a position to do so, don't be afraid to use the health orb to heal yourself, because ultimately being alive is the most important thing in this video game. So, just a general thing when uh, you're using Coalescence in front of a Reinhardt, just assume he has Earth Shatter and try and stay out of line of sight of him or far enough back that Earth Shatter won't hit you. Earth Shatter is one of those ultimates where you can kind of just broadly operate under the... That was really good to actually kill the Mercy through Valkyrie as Moira because you have to actually track her really well to not have your damage just completely negated. It's harder than it seems. Okay. Shut up. Um, 
Earth Shatter is one of those ultimates that you can just kind of assume the Reinhardt probably always has it because it doesn't take that long to charge. So if you're using Coalescence and you see a Reinhardt, just assume he has it and play around it. Even if he like, even if you're not sure if he has it or not, just assume, just assume he does. Just assume he does because he's if he has it, he's going to hit you with it. Like, he will do it. Even if there's a better thing for him to do with that ultimate right there, if you're using Coalescence and he's got Earth Shatter, you're the one that's going to get hit with the Earth Shatter. So, as we can see, this push is going quite well. We're all the way up to the gate right now, and we've got five minutes to spare, so things are going quite well. Uh, there's honestly no reason to use Coalescence right now, because most of our team are dead, and we've already captured this checkpoint. So us using Coalescence right here has effectively done absolutely nothing, because we had already lost that fight, and we already got the checkpoint. It doesn't matter. We're all gonna, like, we're all back right now. We could have just saved Coalescence to use during this section right here, and this would be a significantly better time to use Coalescence than back there. Or maybe you go, all right, that's going well enough over there, and then we save it for the fight in here. Um, cause now would also be like a fair time to use it, cause you could use it to uh, basically guarantee that the Mercy and the uh, Soldier over here die. But, uh, so, you know, it's coalescent, you see, it charges very quickly, but, um, they've just used about 27 ultimates to fend us off right there. Yeah! It's gonna work, you know. You throw the tire, blizzard, and self-destruct in there, you'll probably win that fight. You know, it's just a, it's just a, it's a feeling I have that that's probably gonna go in your favor most of the time. So we almost have Coalescence back again. This is a very fast-charging ultimate we have here. Which is uh, the cool thing about Moira. You get to push the alt button a lot. Feels good. So we're gonna use it right now. This is fair enough. It's uh, one of those ultimates that you can quite easily use before the fight has started and try to engage off of it because it has the sound barrier of effect of uh, giving your team the padding as you go in and it also has a, the aggressive component of damage as well. So use orb to heal self. Like I know it doesn't like it looks like Mercy's gonna heal you. Don't chance it. <laughs> Just use the orb, heal yourself. like you don't want to die. And it's a pretty confined location. You can, like, bounce it off one of the walls in here and have it bounce around during the, pre the preceding fight as well. So, if any time it looks like you might die and you, uh, and you can't just, like, get to a health kit or something, just, just use the orb to heal yourself. It's honestly, like, not worth the risk. So we had fade, didn't fade in time, both supports dead, very tragic. Uh, if just one of us had survived, we probably win this fight, because now just our team has no staying power, unfortunately, so we end up losing that fight, even though we were right there at the end. But Junkrat's tire is this way, where, uh, it fucks you, you know. It, you get fucked. So, uh, we've almost got Coalescence back up again, which is cool, you know, very nice ultimate. We are, like, really, really far. We're being the front line right now. Moira wants to be with her front line. She doesn't want to be the front line. You always want to have someone between you and the enemy team. Because if you get caught, you die. That's just how Moira is. And, like, they got, like, Doom Fist and shit over there. Like, if May walls you off correctly, you can't fade back, you die. Just, like, you know, you gotta be careful. So our team are dead right now. Um, it's it's all over. We've lost this fight. Uh, don't don't mm -mm, no. Just just leave. Just leave. <laughs> Do not fade over here. If you're gonna fade over there, at least throw the healing orb into the hallway ahead of you, so that when you fade over there, you've got like the healing to pad you. But like you've lost that fight. Just leave. Just just leave. So we've got Coalescence built up again now, Genji's got Dragon Blade, that's cool, we've got a couple ultimates, Gen uh, uh, Bustio's dead right now. It's uh, not the greatest pick in the world, because their spawn is right there, we weren't in a position to immediately capitalize, and Lucio gets back very quickly, as it turns out, so it wasn't the greatest pick in the world. Uh, we start, use, like, we use this one, we use this Coalescence a little bit early, because... 
our team are not really in a great position to like engage on this fight and like that can happen so this isn't a great use of coalescence i would hold off on this one for a little bit longer you do want to use coalescence as soon as possible but that's a little bit too soon just hold it until like a, the fight looks a little bit more ready to kick off basically so right here we're like bad 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 juju is bad times we've faded out and uh, Winston's behind us right now is what's happening. So Winston is like more of my concern right now than any of that over there. Because, all right, I see that happening to them. That's tragic. They're fucking dead. Right now, I don't want to die. I turn around and start trying to drain Winston because I see that my healing orb is almost off cooldown. Bare minimum, I'm not going further in right now because I don't want to die. I'm at half health. Fuck that shit. I'm just going to play tag with Winston for a little bit until I can use the healing orb to sustain myself through this fight. Because Mercy is fucking dead at that point. There's no way you save her. So your survival suddenly becomes very, very important. Because that fight was going decently okay. So if you survive, maybe it goes better. Mercy's dead. There's no way you save Mercy in that position. So you just have to make sure that you survive so that you can heal the rest of your team during that fight. There's no point in life throwing yourself in there trying to save Mercy because you can't do it. Yeah, we don't want Mercy to die, but it's not if it's not feasible to keep her alive, just worry about yourself instead because your team needs our support to be alive. Their May was of great help to us right there. You need us support to survive, so don't don't kill yourself trying to save somebody else, even if it's another support. It's don't do it. Previously, like if Mercy was pre-nerf, your Mercy's worth more than you. Mercy is not worth more than you anymore. You are now worth equivalent to a Mercy. Well, how far we've come, right? How far we've come. Two years into the game's life cycle, finally, other supports are worth as much as a Mercy. Don't sacrifice yourself to try and save the Mercy. So, this is our last fight right here. We've got several ultimates. We're using Dragon Blade. We just used uh, the Tire. He managed to destroy the um, the um, Tire with his uh, Dragon Blade as well. So, this is very tragic. Uh, Winston bumps a bunch of people into that one. He punches... Well, I think Roadhog was probably... Roadhog was dead regardless, it looks like. Oh no, he got punched, he got punched, alright. I don't know if he could have pulled it off around the payload from there. He punched uh, Genji into death, though, so very sad, very tragic. It, it looked like it was going to be going well, but then suddenly all of our team dies to self-destruct, and you're like, well, we probably lost this one now, actually. Throw healing orb, save self. The, like, the, the, this situation, you definitely throw the healing orb because you just want to survive as long as possible. This is where you throw it and you bounce it off these walls, you hover around it, you start using your ult and you just hope they can't kill you through your massive regen, basically. Moira can stall out an objective for a surprisingly long time, because if you bounce the healing orb around and drain somebody, that's already over a hundred healing per second. So if you can use your ultimate as well, you can stall out an objective for a surprisingly long time, considering, you know, you're only a, you're only a support. But we all know it's over by that point. It was, it was all over. So we're going to watch the play of the game. Um, someone was very upset about the play of the game. But I was just... I was just playing Monster Hunter before I got, came here, and I was like, this looks like it was made out of a Kulo. Um, if you've played Monster Hunter World, you'll understand, which you probably have, statistics show. It's apparently it's the fastest selling Capcom game of all time, which is very surprising. Considering, you know, Capcom has made a lot of video games. It just goes to show you when you put fucking Monster Hunter on a, on a platform, on several plat on platforms that people actually, like, want to use? It sells really well. Who would have guessed? I know. So someone was really upset about this play of the game because they were like, "Oh, it's fuck! It wasn't he. It wasn't even them. It was all Winston." That's not the. This isn't even the Winston play of the game. This is. There's fucking four minutes left on the clock. This isn't even the play that he's talking about. So that upset me. Um, I found, I found uh, the conversations in the background to be rather aggravating. 
Anyway. So, uh, what, this is, there, there wasn't really any one recurring thing that significantly stood out. It was mostly a bunch of other little earth, like a bunch of things that stood out. I wouldn't say there was one particularly prominent thing that stood out, other than, va well, probably value your self-preservation more as Moira. Uh, di not dying is a very important part of playing a support, and Moira is very hard to kill. Uh, other than that, nothing particular. So, thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them more than happy to answer, and I hope you found the video helpful.